to my channel. Hey yo, hey yo, listen up, listen up, yeah. Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo. The wireless woman. You in charge of the girls, right? I am in charge of the girls. Are you in charge of the girls? I am in charge of the girls. Okay. All right. Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo, Wi Fi. Welcome back to yet another underground transmission of the wireless woman. Go ahead and do me that big favor on your way in and like this video. Why? Because when you like it, well, I I love it. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And click the bell for notifications of when I go live and when I upload new content. So I've had a, a little bump in subs subscribers over the last couple of weeks and I really appreciate it, you know? So I want to say thank you and welcome to all of my new subscribers. And to those of you who come back week after week to watch, go ahead and push it. Push it, push it real good. Go ahead and push that subscribe button. Come on, you want to do it. You know you want to do it. So today I came on to talk about sexio economic relationships. I did a marriage, family, and relationship course last semester, and I found it so intriguing. There are phenomenon. There are things that you think are so unique, individualized. And then you go into a book and find out that a lot of people are having the same or similar experiences. And this book, I mean, it was like <laughs> drumming my pain with his finger. Like it was telling my whole life with this book. And it really talked about marriage as an evolving institution. It talked about family and relationships. So the excerpt that I put in this video came out of my textbook, which I will be linking in the description box below for anyone who wants to take a read, take a look, and check my references. But this particular passage was very telling for me because we don't always talk about what the function of patriarchy is. We talk about it in the sense of what the effects are, but I think a lot of women fail to understand that men as a measure of their masculinity are expected to uphold patriarchy. It's a contract between men and the way that men show their rite of passage, their place within the male hierarchy is based on their ability to allocate resources, of course, but also to dominate, control their women and their family. This is a function of a man's masculinity. And when you look at it in layman terms, you think of it like this. It's the guy who sits around with his friends and brags about his sexual feminine conquest. That gains him, you know, notoriety amongst the male group. And when we listen to, you know, the men with the microphones, that's what they talk about when they talk about, well, you guys choose the Pookies and the Ray Rays or, you know, whatever it is that they're talking about on any given day. Well, these men are part of wanting to uphold what they feel like is the contract they have with other men that says <laughs> we're men when we dominate these women. And see, that in and of itself is a rite of passage for men when it comes to showing their superiority amongst other men. Now, of course, there are groups of men who show their superiority by subjugating, submitting, and dominating other men. But for the men who don't have, but for the men who don't have access to that type of patriarchy, there's marginal patriarchy, wherein a man can run his woman in his home. 
Um, we see it with old shows like Mad Men. I don't know if y'all watch that show, but woo, disgusting. Like, whose idea was that? It's your job. I give you money, you give me ideas. And you never say thank you. That's what the money is for. So, in the sexio economic relationship, masculinities and femininities are a currency. But the explanation of what masculinity and femininity is, it is a social construct that serves the society in which it operates. Right. And we can liken this social construct to how we see race. We talk all the time about how race is not this actual concrete thing. Race is not personality traits. A lot of people think that they think, oh, that's ghetto equals that's black. But it's actually a classist cultural phenomenon that they're describing and then ascribing what they described to blackness. Well, masculinities and femininities are the same exact way. And what we're watching is a convergence of the redefinition of what masculinity is within an evolving culture clash with the social construct that men have to uphold this patriarchy. Out of this primary, though distorted, need for sociability or recognition arises male domination and female subordination. So he instituted the custom of enslaving the female, psychologically bonding with her while increasingly appropriating all economic agency in the relationship and thus all relational control. She thus becomes increasingly dependent, increasingly disempowered economically, increasingly maimed in terms of personal growth. Gender will be her only instrument of countervailing power. The wiles of femininity, a focus on sexuality, the fact, as well as the ploy of her economic helplessness. Out of this class arrangement arises masculinity and femininity as pervasive cultural themes. The aggressive, assertive man, the yielding, compliant woman. These structures become deeply embedded in the dailiness of habit and go sociologically unscrutinized because they are soon to be attributes of the individual person. From birth on, socialization and education inculcate these relational, structural, and stratificational modes. And all of culture conspires to reinforce them through life. Thus, the sexio-economic relation is continuously reproduced. So to explain it in a in a more basic form, it looks contradictory and hypocr hypocritical to now apply the basis for masculinity, say in the 50s and 60s, like we hear the men with the microphone saying, to modern day society. So they'll create these categories. You know, we're traditional men. We're cavemen. No, no, no. We're men from the 50s and 60s who are upholding the social, patriarchal, misogynistic order of that day and time, but we're trying to pull it into a culture and a society where it no longer functions. I.e., we want you to come home, cook, clean, take care of children, but we want you to go 50 50 with us. We want you to submit to us. But we will not provide for you. You're a gold digger if you want our funds, you broke bitch. But <laughs> I'm the man, the leader, and the boss. So these men are trying to create a scarcity model where one doesn't exist. We know that modern technological advancements like Dating apps, <laughs> social media technology has been working in the favor of women, and it has allowed women to expand their options. I was actually talking to one of my friends, and she said that she said, you know, we want the type of marriages and relationships that our grandmothers didn't have 
the courage to ask for. Like we no longer need men or want men in a lot of instances who are just protectors and providers because we saw how emotionally, spiritually, and mentally depleted (laughs) our grandmothers and mothers were. So now we actually have the ability to cast our net wider and look for men who have resources, but also have emotional intelligence and availability. Men who have been evolved and socialized into the new social hierarchy that we have now that's more egalitarian as women are closing the gender pay gaps as women are becoming larger groups of educated people and business owners, homeowners, society is changing. And these masculinities and femininities were always simply a social construct. Social constructs that are intended to fit the society in which They operate. This is why you'll hear American men talk to men who are in other ethnicities and countries and nationalities and say things like, well, y'all women don't act like that Uh, because their social structure operates within a different society. We have something called subculture in America where you have people who will bring their nationality, cultural, religious beliefs into American culture and still operate within the subculture of their personal social structures. So they're able to define femininity and masculinity according to a different social structure. Or you'll see these men now who are beginning to say, we're going to go to other countries and get other women who have been what? Socialized differently than American women. Because again, femininity is a social construct. So to hear things like, you're a feminist if you're a modern woman, is to conflate the actual underlying issue, which is that these things were never originally constructed or defined by us in the first place. They were a function of control, order and hierarchy in the society that they were originally founded in. But we have to evolve it now, whether we want to or not. I don't know if y'all remember months ago when I had Rashawn on my platform and he said that he said the only way to fix this is either for women, (laughs) for women to leave the workforce and go back home, put your aprons on and take your shoes off. (laughs) you know, or to Title IX men, you know, to to give men some sort of subsidy that will bring them in what he felt was equal footing with women, which was to say that femininity has been redefined now by a new social construct. That's the only explanation (laughs) for why women need to submit. Because submission previously wasn't a choice. It was socially prescribed to women. But now that we have the option, now that we have the choice to submit, that means we've created a society wherein women have the egalitarian rights of men to choose. And that's why we see now... (laughs) Those people who want to bring that order back in, yeah, the taking away of pro what choice legislation that lets women choose. We see reproductive rights being peeled back. Now they're trying to peel back no fault divorces. So it's a thought. And I said to someone who made a, a very wonderful, well thought out comment on one of my other videos and you know someone was saying that to me they were like your youtube channel has low engagement ha 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 i don't think so for the people who come and check in 
you take time, you listen to the videos, you watch the content, you give thoughtful responses, and I appreciate this. I think that's more important than just that tons of comments that don't really inform the content on this channel. And I told that person in my response that this is an archive, you know, that this content that I do, that I make is an evolving thing. So as we add to the lexicon of terminology, as we educate ourselves, as we grow, learn, evolve, you know, this is going to be an ongoing conversation about how we make space and make room for everyone at the table. You see, it's not about what we bring to the table. It's about who's at the table when we bring it. So if you see what I see, maybe if you feel as I feel. But if you see what I see, if you feel as I feel, and if you would seek as I seek. Go ahead and drop that fire headphones emoji for me in the comments where I look forward to engaging with you there. But until the next transmission, y'all already know the drill. Go ahead and clock out for me. Just clock out for me. Now this is your place, but I am in charge of the girls. And you can just kiss my ass.